In the Gospel of John, there is an account of a man who has been paralyzed for 38 years. He was lying next to the pool of Bethesda, which was believed to have healing powers. Many sick and disabled people would gather there, hoping to be cured. When Jesus encountered this man, he commanded him to take up his bed and walk, and miraculously, the man was healed. However, Jesus healing this man on the Sabbath led to a conflict with the Jewish authorities due to the violation of supposed religious laws. A similar conflict surrounding the miracle continued for the last two millennia, but not on the issue of healing on the Sabbath, but on whether a pool named Bethesda did exist at all. Interestingly, John's Gospel provides a crucial description of the pool. He mentions that the pool is located near the Sheep Gate and has five colonnades. Though historians have sought the pool for centuries and proposed various candidates, none of them precisely match John's description. Additionally, a pool with five colonnades is so unusual that it leads most scholars to dismiss it as a fictional invention or as a symbolic representation. This indeed raises questions regarding the reliability of the Gospel account and casts doubt on whether this event ever took place. But the speculation took a turn when, in the 19th century, a German archaeologist named Konrad Schick made a groundbreaking discovery. He uncovered a large tank just 100 feet northwest of St. Anne's Church. And after continuous excavation of the site, a rectangular pool was revealed with two basins separated by a wall. And the wall in the middle made the fifth colonnade that John was describing. You can still witness a portion of the southern pool with steps leading into it, which suggests that the southern pool was used as a mikveh, a Jewish ritual bath where Jews would go to cleanse themselves. And the northern pool probably served as a reservoir for collecting water from rain and streams. Subsequently, this water would replenish and purify the mikveh through the fifth colonnade, which featured a small pathway in between that functioned like a dam. These remains provide us with physical evidence that aligns with the Gospel account, connecting us to the time when Jesus walked these grounds. However, the journey of the Pool of Bethesda through time hasn't been without complications, as the site is surrounded by remnants built over centuries, resulting in a complex archaeological puzzle. For instance, owing to its significance to the early Christian church, a Byzantine basilica was constructed over the eastern end of the pool, which was later destroyed by the Persians. We can still see its large columns that extend down to the bottom of the pool. Later, when the Crusaders reclaimed Jerusalem, they built a small chapel on the central wall, slightly to the north, partially overlapping with the remnants of the Byzantine structure. And finally, the St. Anne's Church, which we saw earlier established by the Crusaders, stands a bit southeast of the pool. Returning to the Roman period, on the eastern side of the pools, there are pagan baths dedicated to the Roman god Asclepius, renowned for his healing associations. This feature sheds light on people's beliefs about healing, offering insight into why the sick would congregate there in anticipation of healing. In summary, the Pool of Bethesda has undergone various phases, with structures from different time periods built on top of one another, making it a complex site to comprehend. As we stand at the Pool of Bethesda today, we witness a beautiful convergence of biblical accounts and archaeological evidence. This place, once a center of conflict, now invites us to contemplate on the healing power of faith and the wonders that are hidden beneath the layers of history that now lie there. If you found this journey through history and archaeology of the Pool of Bethesda intriguing, make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media for more captivating historical and biblical content.